So in this video, we're going to state the definition of a derivative, and then we're going to use it to calculate a simple example. So let's first recall our interpretation of a derivative, and it is equivalent to the slope of the tangent line. So if I want to take the function f of x that I've drawn here, and I want to work out its derivative at this point, in principle all I need to do is to work out the slope of the tangent line, and even from the graph I can tell that the derivative of this function at this point is positive. So to work out the slope of the tangent line here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a limiting procedure, and I'm going to start off with this point, where we have evaluated the function at x, so the x value is x, and the y value is f of x, and then I'm going to take another point, evaluated where x is at x plus delta, and the function is therefore going to have the value of f evaluated at x plus delta, so that's this point here, and my first rough and ready approximation to the slope of the tangent line is given by taking these two points and joining them by a straight line. And now it's clear how we can calculate the slope of that straight line. The slope of the line is going to be given by the change in the y value divided by the change in the x value. So the change in the y value is given by this difference here and the change in the x value is given by this difference here. And the change in the y value is our function evaluated at x plus delta minus our function evaluated at x, that's the change in y here, and the change in the x value is given by x plus delta minus x, so that is just simply delta. So from this I can write the slope of the red line above as f of x plus delta, our function evaluated at that point, minus f of x, and this difference is divided by delta. And the argument that we use now is to say, if we were to make delta smaller, in other words, if we were to bring this point in here towards x in this direction, then the point here is going to approach this point along the curve, and we are going to get a better and better approximation to the slope of the tangent line. And in the limit, as delta approaches zero, and this point comes in right in towards the initial point that we're interested in, then we are going to get exactly the right answer. So what we say is that the limit as delta approaches zero of this ratio here, the limit as delta approaches zero of this ratio is going to be equal to the derivative d by dx of f of x of our function. And this is our definition of the derivative, and this is what we are going to use to calculate a couple of simple examples. So I'll go on to a new slide to do this. So a moment ago we just wrote down this definition that the derivative of a function is given by the limit as delta approaches zero of this ratio, the function that we're differentiating, evaluated at x plus delta, minus the function evaluated at x, and this difference is all divided by delta. So let's look at a simple example. Let us differentiate from first principles using this definition. Let us differentiate the function x squared. So this means that we have to work out the limit as delta approaches zero of the ratio with the denominator delta. And in the numerator, 
We first have our function evaluated at x plus delta. Our function is x squared, so if x is replaced by x plus delta, we have x plus delta all squared. And then we subtract our function evaluated at x, so this means we subtract x squared. Now at this stage, we might ask ourselves why we can't just put delta straight away to zero. And the answer is clear if we look at the numerator first of all. If delta was zero, we would have x squared minus x squared. So we would have zero. And if delta was zero, the denominator would also be zero. So we would have zero over zero, and that is ambiguous. So what we have to do is we have to manipulate the numerator in such a way that we try to extract a power of delta which will cancel with the delta in the denominator and make it safe for us to take the limit and in this way as delta goes to zero obtain our result for the derivative. So in this case what we're going to do is we're going to expand the terms in the numerator in particular, we're going to expand this bracket and then see what we get. So we have the limit as delta approaches zero of, and now x plus delta all squared is x squared plus 2x delta, that's the cross terms, plus delta squared minus x squared, and this whole difference is divided by delta. Now we immediately see on looking at the numerator that the x squared term here and the x squared term here cancel and everything in the numerator that is left is proportional to delta and that makes perfect sense because we have already seen that our numerator would vanish if delta was equal to zero. Furthermore we see that everything in the numerator is proportional to delta so we can cancel one of the deltas here and the delta here with the delta in the bottom. So what we obtain is the limit as delta goes to zero of 2x plus delta. And 2x does not vary as delta changes and then we're adding delta to it but that vanishes in the limit. So the result that we obtain is 2x, and if I now pause and shrink this, I can write our final result. So what we have seen is that the derivative with respect to x of x squared is 2 times x. And what I'd like to do now is to move on and generalize this to x to the power of n, where n is a positive integer. So, in the remainder of this video, we want to use this definition, which I've written out again for easy comparison. We want to use this definition to differentiate the function x to the power n with respect to x. And from our definition, we see that this is going to be the limit as delta approaches zero of x plus delta all to the n minus x to the n all divided by delta. And again we see that we cannot just say we'll set delta to zero because we would have the ambiguous zero, this numerator would cancel if delta was naught, divided by zero and we don't know what that means, so again what we're going to do is manipulate the numerator in such a way that we can cancel um, one of the powers of delta in the numerator with the delta in the bottom and then safely take the limit. So what we have to do here is we have to recall the binomial theorem result to expand x plus delta to the n for n being a positive integer. So let us recall that x plus delta all to the n is equal to 
x to the n plus n x to the n minus 1 times 1 power of delta plus n times n minus 1 over 2 times x to the n minus 2 times delta squared plus dot 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 and the dots here refer to other terms proportional to at least three powers of delta. So here there are no powers of delta, one power, two powers, and the terms that I'm not writing down are proportional to three powers. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this expansion for x plus delta to the n, substitute it into here. The x to the n is going to cancel with the x to the n here. Everything that is explicitly left is proportional to delta, or delta squared, or delta cubed, etc. So I'm going to be able to cancel this delta on the bottom with these powers, and then we're going to be able to take the limit. So let me pause, shrink these last two equations, and make myself some room. So what we have is that the derivative with respect to x of x to the n is equal to the limit as delta approaches 0 all over delta of now I'm not going to write the x to the n term because we've said that will cancel with this when I substitute this into here so I am going to be left with these terms here so this is n x to the n minus 1 times delta plus n times n minus 1 all over 2 times x to the n minus 2 times delta squared plus dot 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 where the terms that I'm not writing here explicitly are multiplied by at least three powers of delta so here we have a power of delta here we have two powers of delta. The stuff I'm not writing down is proportional to at least three powers of delta. And again, these coefficients here follow from the binomial theorem, or if you wish, from Pascal's triangle. Now, at this stage we notice that as everything in the numerator is proportional to at least one power of delta, we can cancel the delta in the denominator and we are going to obtain that the derivative of x to the n with respect to x for n, a positive integer, is given by the limit as delta approaches 0 of n times x to the n minus 1, the delta having cancelled, plus n, n minus 1, all over 2, times x to the n minus 2 times 1 power of delta. After all, one of these two powers will have cancelled with this, plus other terms that I'm not going to write out explicitly because they are all proportional to, well, before they were proportional to 3 powers of delta, we've cancelled the delta in the denominator, so the terms I'm not writing out are proportional to at least two powers of delta. And now, because we have cancelled the delta in the denominator from the line above, it is safe to take our limit as delta goes to zero. This term does not depend upon delta, so it is unchanged as delta becomes smaller. This term is proportional to one power of delta. It will therefore vanish as delta goes to zero. And all the other terms are proportional to at least two powers of delta, so they will also vanish as delta goes to zero. So our result for the derivative of x to the n is just given by this term here, nx to the n minus 1. So I will pause this a moment, make it somewhat smaller, and write out our final result. So our result is that the derivative with respect to x of x to the n, which is what we have just been calculating, 
is equal to the value of the only term that survives here. Everything else vanishes because it's multiplied by 1 or perhaps 2 or more powers of delta. So it is equal to n times x to the n minus 1. And having shown this result, it's immediate to ask ourselves perhaps a couple of questions. And one is, how could we extend this to n being a negative integer? And another is, how can we extend this to n being a fractional power? And these are questions that one should now turn to in another exercise and a different lecture.